is the pernicious purveyor of preposterous pomposity, the king of Connecticut, back here once again at the Berman Law Group, Berman Team Podcast Studios, with a very special guest. She is a recent graduate of the Charleston School of Law, and she is a very impressive social media influencer. Let's welcome Victoria Vesh. Victoria, how are you? Good, how are you? Doing great, doing great. So I actually live on Johns Island, right outside of Charleston. That's my primary, primary residence now. And I love Charleston, love it there. Is that where you grew up? No, I actually grew up in Eastern North Carolina, and I moved to Charleston for law school. But my parents got married in Charleston, so it's always a place near and dear to my heart. Such a cool city. Brittany, have you been to Charleston? I haven't, but I've seen um, – I, actually, a friend of mine went, like, a few years ago, and I saw photos, and it just seems so quaint, like a little, little cute little town. Yeah. And I'm like, I would really like to visit there. I'm a Floridian, and I'm like – the typical Floridian that never leaves Florida because yeah. there's so much to yeah. do and so many places to go in Florida. And so I'm like, I don't, I don't travel much. <laughs> I really haven't. I've gone to the basics, but never been in Charleston. What I would compare Charleston to in Florida is St. Augustine. It's, it's yeah, very similar Saint to St. Augustine. Saint Augustine. Yeah. 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 It's a little bigger than St. Augustine. Got but the similar. old world yep. charm. Yep. And yeah. The colorful Love buildings it. and the southern cuisine. So right. It's yes. definitely a place you should stop. And I would, it's, it, honestly, it really is like on my bucket list because it just looks so cute. I love that stuff. I love history and I love yeah. like old towns and whatnot. So it yeah. definitely looks, looks like a place I'd like to visit for sure. <laughs> and I'm going to say for me, for this, for this Yankee coming from Connecticut, uh, Charleston, Johns Island, James Island, Isle of Palms, the Charleston area, and Florida kind of meld together. I mean, you have it's very similar uh, weather. You have the palm trees uh, and uh, the great beaches. Charleston has some, some great hurricanes. beaches. And the hurricanes. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we That's get all right. that good stuff in Charleston Absolutely. as well. And, you know, we say in Charleston um, having – I've been in South Carolina – for God, it's been uh, fifteen years, but I I lived in the middle of the state for uh, thirteen of those years. I had a house near uh, Lake Murray. Yeah, there, you know, in the there. Columbia area. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I've been yeah. all over the Carolinas, like mm. Carolina girl, tried and true over here. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going on two years on John's Island uh, coming up in a few weeks, oh, wow. and. Uh, I it's love the new it. Hot so. spot in yeah. Charleston. It's where everyone's like moving out to. It's crazy. Charleston's getting crazy. It is. Crazy. It used to be a quaint. More island. than South Florida? Yeah. Crazier than South Florida? I feel like everyone's yeah. moving everyone's here moving now. Everyone's moving down south. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everyone's here now. We're full. <laughs> yeah, there's a big exodus from the Northeast. Yeah. It's been happening for a while, and like, the corona mm. accelerated it with all the, the strict uh, conditions the politics. up there and the politics <laughs> yeah. up there. But I'll tell you, the Johns Island area and, and – all around Charleston, and I'm sure it's probably the same down here, the real estate prices are way overinflated. Yeah. It's crazy. It's insane it's crazy. right now. I feel bad for people renting right now. It's like in people, yeah. like a, a one-bedroom apartment is like more than my mortgage for my That's house. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's when like ridiculous. When I was ridiculous. down here, it was really hard to find a place. Yeah. Mixed That's with snowbirds and the mass exodus. It was like... Yeah. What, so what brings you down? to? You're, you're a full-time resident now here? Yeah, I'm a full-time resident. So what? I graduated from law school and... Now I'm going to start working with the Berman Law Group, and I take the bar in three weeks, actually. Oh, so, wow. Awesome. Yeah. That's I hear, awesome. I hear studying for that's pretty intense. Yeah, I'm not much of a studier, <laughs> but, you know, I try to get at least four to five hours a day. I do a lot of a lot. practice questions. So That's a lot. Yeah, I, I, I hear it's no easy feat taking the bar, so props to you. Thank you. Is yeah. there a big difference, like, state by state? Are some states easier to pass the bar than others? I think they say that, but I feel like the bar is just overall one of the hardest exams out there yeah. so it doesn't really matter if you go somewhere yeah. midwest or in florida but florida's its own like little entity so if i take the florida bar i gotta take another bar exam for the carolinas as well so yeah so it's, it's a lot of tests to have to take yeah that's no fun either because like, once you graduate law school then have to take more tests i'm like oh yeah i'll tell you victoria as a novice this the way that i kind of look at it, i think once they're 
attorneys, lawyers for a long time, it seems like lawyers always have to look everything up anyway. Yeah, I feel like there's you some know? continuing education that's yeah. going on this weekend at the yeah. Fountain Blue, but yeah, you gotta keep so you cram gotta keep all on this top knowledge of and then you forget it a lot of it afterwards, right? Yeah, but yeah. I think I think it's for like everybody, like yeah. even like I was yeah. like what stuff I learned in college yeah. and when I went to school for like pff, half that stuff I probably forget too. Exactly. Fitness background and it's like. You know, you, yeah. you got to brush up on hey, some sometimes stuff. Sometimes I still have to add two plus two on my calculator. Yeah, I know. No my judgment. brain's not <laughs> functioning properly. Right. So. so what kind of um, law do you want to uh, practice? Well, right now I'm working um, in the PI division mm -hmm. with Berman, doing a lot of the legal marketing mm -hmm. while I await to take the bar exam and my results. So, yeah, I want to keep in the kind of same industry as personal yeah. injury, commercial, Mm -hmm. possibly even litigation what uh what made you i guess like you want to become an attorney or <laughs> yeah um funny story growing up i was obsessed with wonder woman wonder woman was like my idol and i'm like mm -hmm. i want to be a superhero how mm -hmm. can i be a superhero and wonder woman is lady justice out there serving justice all around the world so i'm like okay how can mm -hmm. i be like wonder woman okay i can't be a superhero i don't have any superpowers mm -hmm. but i can learn the legal realm and serve justice that way so that was like my idea growing up okay i'm gonna be a lawyer i'm gonna be like wonder woman gotcha. so that's just stuck with me <laughs> so you really did like when people ask you like what do you want to be when you grow up like you knew like right away because i didn't figure that out until i think like my third year of college <laughs> what i wanted to do i knew since high school but as a kid i like loved animals i grew up on a buffalo farm so mm -hmm. uh, i wanted to be a veterinarian oh, wow. let's go back to that yeah. you grew up on a buffalo farm and i know north carolina fairly well i used to deal with a lot of distributors there you were more like near Greenville, right? Like Eastern yeah, Carolina? Yeah, like off the I-95 corridor in uh, Carolina. Yeah, I grew up on a farm, wow. buffalo farm. So I always loved animals, That's wanted awesome. to be a vet, but I hate blood and anything bodily fluid. So I was like, nope, that's not for me. Yeah, I might not be the, good, the greatest yeah. avenue. Yeah. So you, um, he had mentioned you are... I guess you consider yourself like an influencer, I guess. How did you get started with social well, I guess media? Other people consider me an influencer. I just consider myself good old Victoria. You have a lot of followers. Yeah. I would consider you influencer. You've got a ton of followers. Well, it just kind of grew over the years. Um, I you know, started Instagram probably right when it came out. Mm -hmm. I was doing all like the basic filters on Instagram, just posting like every day life and then when I became an NBA dancer for the Charlotte Hornets my following grew even more and then I became a monster girl and um, traveled the NASCAR tracks and then it just kept growing it was mm -hmm. just like a snowball effect of growing for whatever I did I don't know if you know um Holly Cagley used to work for me she was with monster she was the monster girl. I hired her when I was with uh brewing companies mm -hmm. when I had the southeast region and I actually have a monster <laughs> I have a monster four wheeler. Oh, a monster four wheeler, that's cool. I got it from her. She gave it to me as a gift when I hired her. It was a floor model four wheeler that they had. And um, they were y'all were running a, a, an event, like, you know, to win the four wheeler. That's awesome. And um, she gave it to me as a gift when I hired her. And uh, I still ride that monster four wheeler. <laughs> yeah, that's that's, pretty, that's, so that's cool. a pretty sweet gift. Yeah. yeah. I, um, oh, yeah. You know what's weird is I don't even. Like, and this is no offense to influencers out there. I hate the term influencer. Yeah, like, too. I wish it was called, because it, it is a legitimate, like, yeah. job, I guess, you know, for people. People, that's all they do. You know, that's how they make their money. But it's like, I've, where did that term, like, come from? I guess I you're feel out here like, influencing people with your following. Like, like, like know, oh, like, oh, buying, buying this, yeah, buying that. Inspiring. I don't know. I, I call it more of, like, a social media specialist. I'll, or, I'll, like, or even just, like, a... I don't know. I don't know what else I would I'm call it. I tell you, Brittany, this is my my perspective as an I don't say an old man, but as a middle aged man myself, mm -hmm. that my daughter's about to be twenty. She's mm -hmm. nineteen, and she's got the same thing. She doesn't have as many followers as you, but she's got a lot of Instagram followers. And and I had this discussion with her. I said, you know, you and your friends, you really don't watch movies anymore. Yeah, and you kind of like your fans of people in your own age group that are Instagram like that's what they watch and that's what she like is aspiring to be like like growing that and then getting people to advertise and I think that that's kind of the way it's going because think about it like in media and I've worked in media I worked with you know Spike TV I mentioned on another episode with Spike TV and with with Bellator fighting championships it was neck and neck with UFC back in the day and that's all going away mm-hmm they don't have cable. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. People under 30, 35, they don't have cable TV anymore. Right. They're, it's all social media. So the celebrities, the stars, you mentioned Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. Think of like how big Linda Carter was. Y'all may be too young to know, but Linda Carter, who was the Wonder Woman on TV, there's, you could have someone on Instagram, like if you were to be Wonder Woman on Instagram, you could be more popular than the TV show if they put one TV show on because all of that is, it's changing so much. Right. And my perspective of that is that it's hurting a lot of jobs in the sense that it's the same thing with music, it's the same thing with TV. You used to have record stores, we used to have video rental stores, we used to have all of these businesses, and now people are, where they'd advertise products. Now they're advertising yeah. products more through social media. So it's it's definitely something that's gonna continue that trajectory to where I think traditional media is gonna completely go away. And it's gonna be stuff like this, like the mm -hmm. podcast world. It helps the podcast world. So there's pros and cons to it, mm -hmm. but I think that's really the way things things are headed. Yeah, I know. I, 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 I totally agree. It's honestly social media. It's like a it's like a necessary evil these days as much as you want to avoid it and like stay off of it or be like, oh, I'm too cool for Instagram or whatever it is. It's like yeah. it's it's it like evolve with the times like it, or else you'll just get like and lost in the past. And, and for it's, brands, for yeah, products for, for sure. where they want to advertise, right? They're putting their advertising in the influencers now. Right. It's it's a totally different world. No, it really know? is. And you also you do a um, you do a podcast also, right? For us, yeah. so tell us about that and where we can find it and all yeah. and all about that. So I just started up a podcast called Validated by Victoria, and I've been bringing my friends on and just kind of talking about life, dating, everything in between, everything that I think is valid for everyone to know. So, yeah, you can find it at Validated by Victoria on Instagram. I'm on Spotify and YouTube. I hit like a hundred downloads the other day so I was really amped. but uh, <laughs> yeah I just kind of started it up and seeing where it goes but now, it's nice to be just able to sort talk of to people. marketing perspective because I know <laughs> how many Instagram followers you have and I'd appreciate if you did this for uh, us with TVT too but for your podcast if you took a small clip of your podcast and you put it on your Instagram with a link where they could go follow where they can find it mm -hmm. or information where they can find it you'll get a lot more than that because you have hundreds of thousands on your on your Instagram. I think it's a slow roll because everybody wants things that are just like 15 seconds or shorter so sometimes it's hard for people just to watch something for like 30 minutes mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I feel like the more I start pushing more content I only have two episodes out right now I filmed three last week mm -hmm. so I feel like the more I keep pushing more content who's the guest that you want Victoria if you could have one guest on one guest I don't I don't know like who would it be? Who who do you like admire that? You or who do you look to for to bring on? Yeah, you said I mean, your friends. Is I it put, like they have? I bring my friends. I want like real people, real life experiences. Um, some other Instagram influencers I've been talking to. Um, I've been actually talking to a former Miss America about being on. Just like friends that I can just really sit and just have like a good conversation with about life and hopefully teach other people some um, life lessons especially dating a lot of people I get a lot of questions in my DMs about dating and being like a what single. kinds of we'd like to see the DM oh, stuff well I was reading DMs on my last episode and I'm like oh no <laughs> it gets pretty bad um, but yeah a lot of people ask me about dating advice and just kind of life advice in general and I talked about mental health last time just things that I think are pretty important that I get a lot of questions on my social media so I've been pushing that, um, but yeah, having my friends on, I think it's just big for me. I don't, I don't feel like sometimes it's hard to relate to someone. You're like, oh, this is like a celebrity. They live such a glamorous life. So just having kind of, I'm not saying average people, but mm -hmm. people you can relate to is what I'm trying to push. You were telling me about your your dad as uh, really cool stories about your yeah. dad before from the boogie down bronx so maybe <laughs> you have your dad on just to get some of us I'm older trying. guys trying so actually you my know. dad and i are like in the process of um potentially filming a tv show uh, and i had to push for him for that he is very anti social media anti anything but he'll sit and watch tv on his phone so i'm like dad i gotta have you in because he is funny sicilian man from the yeah. bronx Strong, That's strong awesome. accent. Crossing generations like that would yeah. be good for you for your show too, because it'll bring in, you know, different different groups. Yeah. You know, because when you have your friends on, you're just locked into that one, like young demo. You know. Yeah. Got to get I, us old I guys. I feel like my show is mostly. <laughs> 
geared towards you know millennials or Gen yeah. Z. Um, for the most part, you kind of have to have that like focus on who are you actually geared to. But I've I've had every demographic tell me they like tuned in and they learned something new. So that's I'm like, awesome. okay, yeah. you know, hey, that's great. Yeah, but I'm trying to get like, you know, males, females on talking about dating, get all different perspectives and talk about life in general. So. We'll see how it you know, continues to turn out, but I try awesome. to film at least uh, two episodes per week. One where I'm solo talking, answering questions, talking about what I think is important generally for myself, and then I'll bring a friend in and we just kind of talk about whatever. I think the last one I did, we talked about moving to a new state across like the country in your 20s and how to <laughs> get how to over that, that hurdle and meet new people and friends. So. What do you see as the big difference between down here in South Florida and Chucktown, Charleston? Honestly, I don't feel like, in Boca Raton in specific, I don't feel like there's much of a difference. It gives me the same vibe. Yeah, it's pretty similar. Vibe, yeah. But like, you go know, down to Miami, it, it's a lot different. It's more like European vibe. Yeah. Um, a lot of diversity. Miami is a yeah. is a different state. It's There's right up the road. Here. <laughs> Floridians, they don't go to. We don't go to Miami. <laughs> but <laughs> traffic is like way crazy here, and I feel like, you know, being in the personal entry room, I see like ten accidents a day mm-hmm. just oh, going yeah. on ninety five. I'm like, oh, Lord have mercy. Yeah, it's a good, good. I finally point. got a sun pass though, so I'm like, hey, I'm just gonna. Oh, nice. Skirt past all these people. <laughs> That's one thing in South Carolina we didn't have to deal with much as the tolls. Oh yeah. You no, know, except unless you get. I think there's one that's up by. Spartanburg or Greenville. It was like the only. That's when you're getting close to like Charlotte. Yeah, yeah. yeah. North Carolina just implemented some like toll expressways. Yeah. But yeah, that's something I didn't have to deal with. But I'm glad I have a sun pass here. <laughs> it's the little things that count. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, de- it definitely helps. That's for sure. So does, do, do people, you say like DMs and whatnot, do people ever like try to or like ask you questions like, what do you look for in a guy? Or like, are like, you're, you said you should you're, ask you though. Are, I'm sorry, I didn't, are you single? Are you yes, dating? I'm okay. single. I'm single. Okay, so like if, if people are like, oh, like, why are you single? Or, you know, people always ask that, like, why? It's like, well, some people, maybe they just haven't found the right person yet, or maybe yeah, they just choose to be because they're right. focused on, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, do you do you get questions like that? Or, and also, oh, like, gosh. I mean, what do you get or what do you look for, I guess, in, in uh, somebody? Yeah, so my DMs are uh, very interesting yeah. <laughs> for a single woman. Mm-hmm. Um, you get some questionable DMs or, like, oh, yeah. oh ask yeah. me on dates and then, yeah, a lot of people are like, oh, what qualities do you look for? I feel like I've been on a lot of dates yeah. in my life. Um, and so I feel pretty basic with, like, what I want in a yeah. man. Mm-hmm. I still haven't found someone to hit that baseline yet. But yeah. I've really been focused and in tune yeah. with my success and building who I am as a person and professionally and even spiritually, mentally, emotionally being set before I find someone else. I think it's truly important that you have a strong foundation before you kind of help, you know, give yeah. of yourself to another person. But yeah, yeah I, I just haven't found that right person yet. But yeah. Maybe soon. I have no expectations. Yeah, well, studying for the bar takes a lot of your time yeah. too. So <laughs> I, I, I'm maybe working after nonstop, mm-hmm. studying nonstop. I'm, I'm, you know, working with the Berman team and working mm-hmm. on my own brand. And we got a lot of wheels in motion going on now. It'd be hard to like share my time. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's so interesting now when you're a social influencer and you've like you've got hundreds of thousands of followers. You are a business unto yourself, and it's uh, it's something that's unique. Uh, and it's and it's new, right? Yeah. And this hasn't. This is something that's only occurred since the social media explosion. And that's very. That's that's a pretty awesome thing. It's a pretty powerful, cool thing. Yeah, I, and building that brand up, I kind of put that on the back burner at the end of this year because I went through some stuff. But um, yeah, building my brand up is very important to me because yeah. I've done it pretty much by myself. I had the help of my mom. Um, growing up but now it's just kind of solo me trying to build my brand up so it's the way of the future really is 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 what it's what it is now Mm -hmm. and uh it's something pretty awesome and the folks that have the success you've had in that arena they're all so young and we talked in a previous episode about uh jake paul (laughs) and uh, jake paul is an example of a guy who who built himself up 
through that social media influencer network and uh, and has had enormous success. I, I, I always say I'm a Jakeaholic. <laughs> Actually, uh, Jake Paul. He's crazy. What did he get famous for? Well, fighting. I mean, he's had a lot of success. Like, Maybe I don't not, I was saying the last you know, time, I don't even follow him. Yeah, I mean, he, he played it right. And I'll just not to bore you guys on it, but he, he picked UFC champions and legends that weren't great boxers, and he boxed them and knocked them out. And some big names, but he's been, he's the way he's called out some of the UFC stuff, like we did on a previous, you remember our episode with Bob Carson? Mm -hmm. where we talk, he's been doing that in a really colorful way. And I mean, I got to hand it to the young man. He's a heel. You know, they hate him. And he and the way that being a heel works is you want people to, you know, you want people to hate you, make more money that way. And he's done a tremendous job of it. That's kind of the converse of the way you you are in your social media. Your your people people love you. They don't hate you. But it's, it's same I have way. some people who hate it, me. It's better. But I'll tell you the the great quote, and this is so true, uh, in combat sports and in entertainment, is it's best to be liked or hated. You don't make your money when you're in between. Yeah. And people don't care about you. I, I had yeah. someone tell me before, they're like, a hit is a hit no matter what kind of hit it is. Either they love yeah. you or hate, hate you. Like, yeah. that's going to push you somewhere. I think something about Jake Paul or the Paul brothers, that I think how they get such heightened fame is that they're so hated. Yeah, absolutely. People are like, I don't know why they're famous. It's because you, you keep hating on them so much, you're making them even more famous. You can turn hate into love much quicker than you can turn indifference into love. Indifference yeah. is the worst. You right. know? Yeah. Well, go ahead and um, for the people that don't follow you, let us know where we can find you, your Instagram yeah. handle and all of that stuff. At Victoria Vesh, that was V-E-S-C-E, or if you want to follow my podcast, mm -hmm. at Validated by Victoria. Awesome. Well, Victoria, it is an absolute pleasure to have you on, and I want to thank you for listening to the Berman Team Podcast. Until next time.